talking about celebrity and stuff, I was thinking earlier on how, because I was thinking, I think no, I spoke earlier on in the podcast about how I made a solemn promise to myself to just leave people alone for the most part, especially people I look up to in this really niche, you know, interest field that I'm in when it comes to DJ, when it comes to design, when it comes to art and fashion and stuff. It's not really worth it because you don't really know how that person's going to receive your you know, vociferous, you know, excitement for the things that you're into or for the love and appreciation of the things that they do. And sometimes it can come across a bit weird, especially if it involves a woman, it can kind of come, you know, it's hard to avoid the whole creepiness of it. It's hard to avoid it not being creepy. So it's best just to kind of admire from afar. And I think there's many platforms already that exist in terms of leaving comments, in terms of liking posts, in terms of sharing stuff on your own feed. Those are all ways that you can definitely take part. And even if you want to just open a flipping fan account somewhere and just keep standing for them and just keep posting stuff about them all the time. And that's a good way to kind of build a level of rapport with somebody also without really being too involved, I feel like, with all that kind of stuff. But it also got me thinking about the different levels of celebrity and the different levels of fame and how they are quite nauseating to deal with and how the benefits or the negatives far outweigh the benefits for the most part. And it made me think about this video with, uh, what's his name? Ben Affleck recently at a deal book summit for the, with the New York times. I think it's the same thing that that guy from SVX was flipping for some reason being interviewed at and kind of copping please with whatever it may be. And he still made an appearance in there, even though he's flipping scammed a bunch of people for billions and billions of dollars. But Ben Affleck was there, I guess, for a different reason, giving a talk. And he had some very sobering and interesting views on celebrity and fame overall, which I think are very interesting to kind of listen to and understand from the point of view, from his point of view, that maybe also it could impact the way that you maybe look at these celebrities and people and how you interact with them in the real world. So let's have a listen to what he has to say. I'm not built for to be famous. I don't like it. You can keep it. I really have not gotten any benefit from it other than, you know, I've gotten out of some speeding tickets and some restaurant reservations, and I don't wait in line at Disneyland, which may, in fact, be worth it if you've ever waited five hours to take a three-minute ride. But other than that, I'm not somebody, and I have no judgment around this, a lot of performers, kind of inherently, because nobody wants to play to an empty house, right? They want to have that attention. Part of it's a tree falling in the woods. If you are an artist, you want to have the audience experience your art, you're trying to generate empathy and move people off well, no one's there. So attention, people often conflate it with narcissism and solipsism and self-absorption. It's not really. What it is, is I'm somebody who wants to express something to people very profoundly, so all people there to respond to that. And that is sort of becomes a part of fame. And now fame has segued into this sort of you know, desire to see behind the curtain, and we want to see behind the curtain, behind the curtain, behind the curtain. And the truth is, behind the curtain is more boring, and behind the curtain, behind the curtain is more boring. It takes a lot of work and energy and dedication of a lot of people to create this illusion for two hours of something really interesting and, and captivating. The real people are not that interesting. And that's the <laughs> sobering truth about the whole thing. And like I said before, I think it must be really dizzying to be him and have that realization. But then it also made me think in general about the perfect levels of celebrity and what you'd want to maybe try to be and what's maybe advantageous. And it got me thinking about two areas, maybe specifically contemporary artists and professional DJs, where in their particular niche, they are very, very well known. You think of, um, you think of, uh, uh, you think of a Sarah Lucas, for instance, one of my favorites. Um, you think of a David Hockney, another kind of OGS doing great things, and a slew of others within the art space, within the art field. If they're at a private view, if they're at a flipping auction, if they were at you know Miami Art Basel, they'll be getting absolutely you know uh, swarmed. But the moment they step away from that scene and they're just living their everyday life and they're you know off on vacation somewhere or they're shopping for some bits to eat and flipping waitros, no one's gonna bother them whatsoever. No one probably know who they are, but. Same goes for like DJs, right? You think of a Charlotte DeWell, an Amy, uh, you know, an Amy Len, a Mealy Lenz, a Peggy Goo, a Carl Cox, all these really big people, Deborah DeLuca, Nina Kravitz, when they're not in dance floor type situations, when they're not in cities where there's a predominantly nightlife type community and scene, they for the most part live a really innocuous kind of, you know, mundane life that nowhere really bothers them about. But the moment they step into that field, of course, they swarm. But outside of that, it's every day is kind of normal and chill. And that's probably the perfect 
a type of celebrity that someone would want everyone would kind of want that kind of celebrity where you sort of get left alone for the most part and no one really bothers you for the most part i think that's probably the best place to be if that was me for the most part but again you don't pick the scenes that you're in or the things that you're into and sometimes that fame as well can be really intoxicating it can be really hard to kind of let go and to kind of pull yourself away from that faucet as it's kind of streaming out and the tension's getting to you and it's making you get dizzy and it's making you feel as if like the more you do it the more successful it helps you and really for the most part especially we've seen on social media it doesn't necessarily do much if you think about it in terms of really propelling your career what really propels your career unfortunately especially nowadays is mostly the work if the work isn't good it doesn't matter like if you're not in a good show which probably isn't your kind of in your control if you're an actor because you have to go and audition you have to hope you get picked so there's a lot of kind of hoping the moment is for you if you're not in the right movie if the movie isn't or show isn't directed by the right person doesn't have you know the a high level of you know showrunners on it or screenwriters you've seen already what's happened with um the show about flipping lord of the rings that was terrible that prequel v the house of the dragon and how great that was you know who was to know i guess that cast you know the cast of the flipping what's it called um the rings of power they probably had no idea the show was going to be shit until they started filming or maybe until they started reading the script they probably thought they were going to be in something that was going to be monumental and actually change things forever and change the course of their career when in actuality it probably hindered a lot of their careers because now they're associated with this woke mess but it's not really in your control but that of course is something that you kind of want to be a part of but for the most part if the work isn't good it doesn't matter like i think of one of my favorite actors nowadays is that um, guy charlie hume well i think they pronounce his name charlie hume or charlie hunnam the guy that's in sounds of anarchy and a few other bits and bobs and he for the most part avoids most press most interviews doesn't have any social media and basically lets the work talk for itself the work sometimes is a bit choppy it's a bit up and down in terms of the quality but i just like the way he navigates his career and kind of navigates his life he kind of treats you know work he kind of treats acting like a job and keeps his, his family and all that sort of stuff life separate and i'm sure because he's not really out and about and in your face it probably does affect the way he kind of navigates the world also he probably gets left alone because it's kind of like the adage people have of meeting celebrities in really weird places like usually if you're a celebrity the higher profile you are the more regular things you do day to day the more people will leave you alone the more special you walk around and you make it into an event you have a million security guards and you're stopping traffic it turns into a situation but if you just leave it all and kind of you know or if you just go to places that people don't expect you to be at or you just act completely normal it really doesn't turn into that big of a deal it's really odd how that kind of happens but uh big up ben affleck for the sobering and interesting perspective into being a celebrity and how fame isn't always cracked up to be i thought that was pretty interesting to be honest but the irony of it also is you don't get with jennifer lopez if you're not famous you know that's the irony of it jennifer lopez isn't dating her fedex guy right she's not dating she's not dating him she's not dating the guy that's doing the picking and packing at the amazon fulfillment center unfortunately sorry my guys out there at the amazon fulfillment center you you have no chance of flipping to you know j-lo doesn't matter how much money you make over there it's not, it's not gonna happen so fame can be somewhat beneficial because it allows you access to people who you probably wouldn't have access to but everyday life things probably not the greatest